Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I feel awkward to speak English to an old German audience, but that's the best I can do. As uh, he was presenting me, I remember a far side cartoon where the owner is talking to the dog and saying, you shouldn't do that, Bobby. You're a bad dog, Bobby. And next time, and, and the, the dog, the only thing he hears, blah, 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 Bobby, blah, 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 Bobby. <laughs> So I understood my name, but uh, I hope he didn't say anything terrible about me. Um, I, I, I have a great pleasure today because this is the first time, I think, since I left MIT that I come back to a university and will try to integrate two different parts of my life. I grew up as an academic. I, I studied economics and mathematics at Berkeley, the University of California, and then I taught management information systems at MIT. And when I was in MIT working with Peter Senge, I started working with uh, companies. And what I discovered is that much of the research that I was doing in fairly, I wouldn't say complex, but difficult models with lots of math. And I remember I went to Digital Corporation, it was my first uh, research project. And I asked the, uh, the manager there in charge of the supply chain, I was going to help him optimize the supply chain. And I said, well, tell me, what's your objective function? What are your constraints for optimizing this? And he said, we don't have an objective function. We have a mess. <laughs> I said, OK, well, what's the mess? Well, you know, Joe and Sally have to work together. But they hate each other's guts. <laughs> and Joe is supposed to bring the parts for Sally to put in the assembly line. But they, they don't talk. And I was thinking, how do I model hate your guts? I, I've never seen an equation. <laughs> For, for that. So uh, I said, I don't know if I can do that. And I, and I, rem I don't know how the conversation came about, but at some point he said, well, you know, we can get PhDs a dime a dozen. What we need is people that can help solve problems. Now, after investing 20 years of my life in getting a PhD, that was not what I wanted to hear. But that was the case. Uh, that's exactly what he said. And, you know, six years later, I, I, I wouldn't say I agreed with him. But I realized that there was a, a, a gap between the world of academia and the models that we were working on there and the world of practitioners and what they needed to integrate. And the academics didn't like the practitioners very much or the consultants. In MIT, being called a consultant is almost an insult. It's like being a prostitute. You know, you, you sell yourself for money. Like, you know, you don't get a salary for being a professor. But, you know, it's not a very nice thing to be a consultant. And in the consultant world, when someone says, oh, but you're an academic, that's an insult. <laughs> so what, what I'd like to do today is recognize and honor the contribution of two sides. And maybe the first part will be a little more, uh, I, wouldn't, I don't know if I would say academic, but I'll present some notions that maybe managers would consider a little far out. And then in the second part, I'll bring it all back. And I share with you some of my experience as a consultant. I'm the president of a consulting company. And, you know, there's about 150 people working in my company all over the world. So I'd like to share not so much research, but just the personal experience and what we have done that, that has helped different companies achieve goals they wanted to achieve. So uh, this, is, this is quite an impressive title. I don't even know exactly what it means, but hopefully we'll figure it out together. It's, it's very academic in that sense that, uh, let's see, oh, my clicker is not clicking. There. So I'll start with this. Uh, uh, is it possible to lower this light? I think it's hard to see. Can people see the screen? More or less. Would it be possible to lower one of these? I, I don't know if it's possible. That, that side may be difficult because um, it's. There. Oh, OK. Now you can do it. OK. So now I have to come a little closer. Um, there's a, this tale about the five, men and five, five blind men and the elephant. And each one of them is touching a different part. It's actually a, a, a religious story. It's used in spiritual disciplines to say, well, it's impossible to understand the nature of totality. Certainly, totality is a very complex system with lots of nonlinear feedback loops and weird things like that. So they are all trying to touch a part of the system. and 
get some understanding by sharing information. And that's, that's a, a story that most people know. But what I'm going to argue today is that the situation is infinitely worse. We don't have five blind men trying to discover what an elephant is. But what I'm going to argue is that we have one blind man trying to understand an elephant, but he's getting information from a tiger, a bat, a bee, and a snake. So it's not four other blind men, but each one of these other organisms is conveying information in a completely different language, in a completely different model of the world and worldview. So the problem is not just to integrate information, but to integrate radically different perspectives or experiences of the world. So I will use, that's what I mean by postmodern. I will say the world is not out there. The world of experience is conditioned by the perceptual and cognitive filters of the experiencer. So leading as simply integrating information from different sources is not really acknowledging that the information is not objective. The information is pre-processed by the different mental models of the observers that are going to convey that information. So the problem is a lot worse. So Ashby's law, to remind you, it's, it says if a system is to be in control, the number of states of its control mechanism must be greater than or equal to the number of states in the system being controlled. Only variety can control variety. So what Ashby says is we need uh, a lot of processing power to, or, or a processing power that's commensurate with the variables that are in the system that's trying to be controlled to maintain a system in control. I'm going to call this This modern view would imply that leadership effectiveness is a direct function of the leader's ability to control the key variables of a system. That would be a natural extension of Ashby's law. If someone says, I want to be a leader, what do I need? Well, I need to be able to control the key variables of the system. And I'm going to call this the modern interpretation. That is, the world is out there, there are variables, I can control them, I just have to do this. And it's a very cybernetic 1940s type perspective, like a computer system that can process information and come up with an answer. However, um, that's not the way the world is. There's an interesting story that Gareth Morgan, you may have heard his name, he, he wrote several wonderful books, Images of Organization is his first one, where he used a metaphoric perspective to understand organizations. He, has, he tells this wonderful story about uh, Picasso. A man went to Picasso and said, I'd like a portrait of my wife. I'd like you to paint a portrait of my wife. So Picasso painted the wife, and this is what he painted. Uh, and when the man went to see him and Picasso unveiled the painting, the guy was very upset and said, what have you done? I mean, this is not my wife. My wife doesn't look anything like this. And he said, really? What does she look like? So the guy took his wallet, opened his wallet, and showed him a picture. He said, this is what my wife looks like. He said, Picasso looked at the picture and said, hmm, she is rather small, isn't she? You see, the notion that the picture is an accurate representation of the wife is also a model. There's no such thing as the ultimate reality. We privilege some perspectives, and we don't privilege others. But the notion that there's a reality out there, and a camera is more truthful in some sense than Picasso's rendering, it's already an opinion about how we are to interpret the world. So it's a lot more complicated than, oh, we're just going to get information. 